specific gains is, is really important. One page, this, um, like the approach, you've got to start really early on the specific gains. Um, one page, I'm going to give you a formula. It's going to be an intro paragraph, a second paragraph, the aims themselves, and a final summary paragraph, which of course you can tailor a little bit, but this is like a good starting formula for you guys. Uh, Non-technical writing, uh, this is again something that will be read by everyone, not just the people who are experts in your area. So it's, there's really an art in writing these. You need, it has to include everything that's really important, but with not too much detail. And you're trying to put the hook in to get people really excited to read your grant. By the time they read your one-page specific aims, they are just really excited to read your grant. Um, so first paragraph. The goal here is to introduce your subject and capture the attention. So first sentence. I told you this is a formula. Here's the formula. First sentence, this is a hook what this is about and why it is important. As, I, as you saw before, I'm really into referencing NIH documents and stuff. If you, you consider uh, referencing an NIH or Institute of Medicine document that somebody else, it's not just me that thinks this is important, like this has been published, that this is a really important area. Um, then you follow that first hook sentence with three to five sentences, very, very concise, just, a, just enough to tell people what is known about this area. Um, just enough to educate them. Don't get into the little details. That's going to be later in the approach section that Dr. Filler talked about and, um, and uh, Dr. Elishoff. So then this is the big thing. There is a gap that you are going to fill. And you're going to talk about, because you've already said this is what is known, then you're going to talk about the gap. One of my personal pet peeves, although not everybody feels this way, but I don't like it when people say, uh, it's never, nobody has ever studied this. It's never been looked at this. Because that's, that's not a reason. There's so many things that nobody studied that should not, never be studied because they're not worth studying. What's important is the gap between uh, what is known and what we need to know. And your study is going to contribute to filling that gap. Um, and then a final sentence in this first paragraph is to say this is such an important, there is a critical need for your hypothesis-driven either new knowledge, new technique, or new treatment that you're going to develop in your proposal. And it should read as the logical next step. Second paragraph. So that's the first paragraph. Second paragraph, you're going to talk a little bit, without, again, without too much detail, because you have that whole approach section Dr. Elshoff and Dr. Filler told you about to get into the nitty-gritty details. But you're going to talk about how your team has just been on this natural trajectory to getting here. Maybe that was in your K award, K, the work you've done or from your other work. And that your team has the expertise to fill this gap that you've identified in the first paragraph. So you're going to, here you can talk about the longer term goal, your hypothesis and your rationale, and your objectives and your team's qualifications, some combination of this. This is where, like I said, it's an art. It's not a strict exact. It's going to be tailored a little bit to yours. But then the, this second paragraph is going to segue right into the aims. And then you're going to say the actual aims. There will be, it needs to, no, five is kind of pushing it, three to five, probably better three, especially if you're going to have any sub-aims. Each single aim needs to have one sentence, be very concise, very concrete. Clarity is the goal here. Each aim needs to, so I've said it's very concise, but now I'm going to list like six things that each one has to have. So I told you this is really hard. This is, I think this is the hardest part of the grant. Um, describe the experimental approach, or um, you know, to use Dr. Elishoff's term, the study design, because you do not, I completely agree with what he said, if you do not have that study design crystal clear, it's the whole, it's going to be confusing from the get-go. Be clear how you're going to test the hypotheses. It has to have a realistic time frame. Again, you're not going to have the whole uh, time, the whole study timeline here, but it has to be realistic. Um, it has to have a definitive outcome and state exactly what your outcome is going to be. And another trick is you want to be very careful that each aim is not, de aim three is not dependent on aim two, and aim two is not dependent. You can't have aim one be that you're going to um, see whether this new instrument works to measure this. And then in aim two, you're going to use that instrument. If, what, what happens if that instrument in aim one doesn't work, right? What are you going to do? 
Um, and then after you've listed the aims, you want a final paragraph with a few sentences to get this reviewer excited to read your proposal. So um, one document, I've actually I've given this talk for a few years, but I thought I'd go to the literature and see what else is out there, what other people are saying. And I found this, this publication that talked about, you could think about your aims as an hourglass. So you start at the, uh, the wide part, which is the really general big, you know, that IOM report that says this area of research is so important. Then you narrow down to the specific aims that are the actual very, very specific. But then you need a broad base that our, the, it's going to tip over unless you have a wide base. So the wide base is the, that really supports your proposal. Here you might want to give a hint of the innovation. Talk about the outcomes if you haven't mentioned it in the aims, and then maybe a one sentence on what the payoff is going to be. How is this going to help those people? You can refer back to the first paragraph. You know, like the you talked about the millions of people who suffer from this disease. Well, down at the bottom, you talk about this research is going to help those millions of people that you talked about in the first paragraph. Um, so now when you've done the specific aims, you can refer to these specific aims throughout, you should refer to them throughout the whole application. And this is where you've got to be nitty gritty detail. Use the exact same words. If you have one, if you, once you change one word in your specific aims, you probably have to go back to three different places in three or maybe four in your grant to change that word to make sure it, everything should completely line up. Um, I agree with Dr. Eleshoff. I think a conceptual model is a really good way to, uh, make your grant easier to read, to express ideas. So, and I, this is perfect, just like um, he did on his grant with um, Dr. Dubinet, having the aims line up on your figure with your aims that you've put in the text and on your specific aim pace is really nice. Consistent terminology is essential. Don't use three different words to describe the same thing. If you're talking about a measure, use the word measure. Don't say measure, outcome, survey. Be really, really consistent. You want to make it really easy for that reviewer. So exactly the same terminology throughout the whole grant. Um, Oh, and then this is just, this was that paper that I found. That, this is where I got the hourglass metaphor. So uh, thank you. I told you I'd be short. So.